Welcome to Outer Red Hands. I'm Jeremy. I'm Lyle. And today we're going to talk about Secrets of Blackmore, the true history of Dungeons and Dragons, a documentary by Griff Morgan, yep, Chris, Chris Graves, Chris Graves, and Ivy Morgan edited, and the composer was Alex Karlamov. So this is Volume One, the evolution of the role playing game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, at least the two part documentary. Yes, uh, you were saying that that he had like. Two, uh, no, you know what? Actually, oh. they, although he has 200, uh, Griff was saying that he has 200 hours right. of video, mm-hmm. they're actually re interviewing these people. Oh, wow. I, I saw a post the other uh-huh. month, so for part two, yeah. Oh, excellent. But, but what is part one? Right. Yeah, so part one the evolution of role playing. It's a documentary about the origins of the role playing game. Uh, Blackmore, for people who aren't familiar, was created by Dave Arneson. And Dave Arneson, if you look at the original Dungeons & Dragons, the, the white boxes, mm-hmm. it has, says Gary, Gy- Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, so the co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons. Right. But before Dungeons & Dragons, he was part of this group called the Twin City Gamers. Mm-hmm. And Secrets of Blackmore is their story right. about the Twin City Gamers gaming group. Mm-hmm. Not only Blackmore, but the other games that they played. and. And what this actually isn't, despite the subtitle, you know, The True History of Dungeons and Dragons, this isn't just a documentary about Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, it's taking place pretty much before Gary Gygax comes into the story. Right. So it's really about the history of role playing games uh, and mm-hmm. how role playing games come to be, and just not this particular role-playing game, but the idea of role-playing games. Right. And so so if you're not particularly interested in uh, Blackmore, the campaign setting, that's fine. That's going to be in part two, or more of this is going to be in part two, the, right. called uh, Imaginary Worlds. Mm-hmm. If you're not interested in Dungeons and Dragons, that's fine too, as well. That, that might play more in part two, but here, this is for somebody, or just anybody who's interested in uh, role-playing games, or interested in game design so (laughs) if you are really interested in powered by the apocalypse and that that's all you like to play then that's fine you can watch this and definitely appreciate uh, these stories and what's going on or Mm -hmm. if you do like dungeons and dragons you're definitely going to appreciate that as well um so that uh, really is for any role player and i think yeah just because of the name some people might dismiss it Mm -hmm. And the documentary itself starts out in a pretty bold way. They have mm. a video clip yeah. of Dave Arneson. Yeah, and we should say, like, Dave Arneson passed away mm-hmm. a few years ago, so they weren't able to interview him, but they were able to interview the Twin City Gamers, also Dave Arneson's father mm-hmm. and his daughter, who, who I think is part of the, the new Twin City Gamers. Right. And, and yeah, but they do, yeah, like you said, they start with a, a clip of Dave Arneson and, and they, they bookend the documentary with clips of Dave Arneson, yeah. But the just the format of the documentary is talking heads, you mm-hmm. know, where they take these people and the, the, you can hear some questions, but it's mostly these people relating what happened. So mm-hmm. it's very much like, like the primary source right, right. of that. It's not the filmmaker's interpretation of what happened, reading stuff, it's these people that were there telling you exactly uh, what they experienced and how things came to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they, after the uh, Dave Arneson video, they show the reunion of the Blackmore bunch mm-hmm. uh, playing uh, their annual game of, uh, of Blackmore that uh, is done the same way that it was done when uh, Dave Arneson uh, was was still alive and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a it's a, both a, a happy occasion and sad because he's not yeah. there but they're you know they're paying tribute it's it's uh, a tribute to the creator yeah, yeah. I mean it's their, their annual tradition and the big su- the first of many surprises was they're not actually playing Dungeons and Dragons right they're playing their game <laughs> yes. their uh, the, the the game that predates Dungeons and Dragons right and it's right. very free form yes, and that yes. yeah so yeah that so was it's, a, yeah, it's Dave Arneson's ping pong table covered yeah. with you know brown butcher paper with maps drawn on it. Yeah, and all of the rules are in the game master's head. They're yeah. not referring to any rule books or anything printed, and there's just pencils, paper, and dice. Yeah, so, yeah, basically. Yeah, and we're gonna say like this review. Uh, we we enjoyed the documentary, so mm. if you just wanted for that, yeah, just <laughs> go watch the documentary. Uh, 
And when we do when we talk about the surprises or, or our experience watching the documentary, we're really going to avoid uh, giving or uh, spoiling the documentary yes. for you, because I mean these surprises are better coming from them. Mm -hmm. You know, I because so, like yeah. we want you to experience the documentary the way we did, mm -hmm. and yeah, you're like, wow, oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, instead of us telling you all the the good stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and uh, the documentary st uh, starts out. Uh, in the discussion of role playing by defining what is a role playing game. Yeah, th that was an interesting choice. Yeah, mm -hmm. because you would think that anybody that was, you know, would, would be interested in Secrets of Blackmore would be familiar with what a role playing game is. Right. Yeah. And I think the the reason for doing that is they wanted to help you understand how these things evolved. It wasn't mm -hmm. just uh, oh, we want to do this and let's create a system for it. It was a, a gradual evolution and a contribution of, of different people uh, with different systems. You know, they, yeah. they were taking different bits and pieces from from war gaming or, or other uh, types of games to uh, create what we now understand as a role playing game. So by giving that definition, you can see where all of those pieces are coming from. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like prior to watching the documentary, uh, Griffith said that you know, is there like a real clear definition of what role playing is? So he provide. He wanted to help contribute to that definition, uh, or him, him and Chris Graves wanted to help contribute to that definition. So yeah, they kind of provide that. But like you were saying before, mm -hmm. then it really sets up, yeah, how all the here are the pieces. Right now, we're going to watch the the rest of the documentary, which is going to get into where did these different pieces come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was really good. And another thing I thought it also helped set up is. Because he's describing this, and you think, "Oh, well, I know this," but he's also sets up like to the uninitiated, role playing games can be really strange or a really alien concept. And now, like forty years later, like we don't appreciate how unusual this style of game is for a, for a lot of people. Right. And then you watch, you know, what they're saying, and you know, I think. Uh, the, the person who ran the first role-playing session, David Wesley, mm -hmm. he, he later he wrote something to, that had to explain on paper, you know, mm. take what was in the, his head and write on paper, you know, what this game was about. And he, and I'm not going to tell you what particular tool he uses in order to convey what a role-playing game is, but the tool he uses is actually still in use. Mm, yes. And when people write... <laughs> Somebody who's writing a role-playing game right now is probably including this in their their rule book mm -hmm. because it's so necessary. And then you realize you like, yeah, I guess you would need that to understand what this game is. Mm -hmm. And like everybody's writing a role-playing game should be assuming that uh, some this is going to be somebody's first role-playing game. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe not some games. <laughs> yeah, out there. So I, yeah, that was that was really sh surprising. Like I didn't. I sh should have expected that, but mm -hmm. then you watch it and you're like, wow, that was there, there from the very beginning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like something like that. This wasn't something that, you know, 10 years later, people like, you know, we really should kind of add that when we write rule books. <laughs> like, no, it was there from the beginning. So I, that was really surprising. And yeah, you get that, you know, like, unlike, you know, I think some people take issue with, you know, role playing and Dungeons and Dragons being synonymous. But Dungeons and Dragons actually provides a shorthand. So, like, if you're playing Vampire mm. or uh, if you're playing Monster Hearts, and somebody goes, "Well, is that like Dungeons and Dragons?" You're like, "Yeah, it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> except yes. we're teenagers in high school <laughs> playing different monsters, and it's like in a modern time, right?" But yeah, you know, you might not like that, but it actually makes it easier to somebody who's unfamiliar with role-playing games to kind of understand mm. what you're what you're doing, yes, or what you what you're inviting them to do. And there, they didn't have that. Right. No. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I thought the David Arneson's father. Mm -hmm. and, and you see him, and the, the man is still really active, so you realize just how young Dave Arneson was when yeah. he passed away. But he did a, does a really good job, like, taking us back to when he was watching... No, not really watching over, but because they were in the basement. <laughs> but you know, his like his thoughts when his son was first playing war games, mm -hmm. and then other games, and he's just like, well, you know, what are they doing? Mm. And like his, 
you know, what, how he viewed it as, as an outsider. And I thought that was really good to also really reinforce that this is, these are just like really unusual things that they were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was good to see his daughter involved in the, the gaming group. And so you seeing the, the next yeah. generation continuing. So we saw the reaction of his parents' generation yeah. and his, uh, his kids actually participating. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Stuff. We talked about the bookends, like he starts with, you know, like David Arneson talking about the legal issues that, mm -hmm. that came about. And so you might think if you watch that initial clip that, oh, this is going to be a documentary of the Arneson versus Gygax mm -hmm. over who who should get credit for D&D &D or, or sharing the credit for Dungeons and Dragons. And people are people unfamiliar when Dave Arneson is on the original Dungeons and Dragons, his name is on that. But then when Advanced Dungeons and Dragons comes out, his name right. is not included. Right. And he had uh, left TSR at that yeah. point as well. Right? So you might think, oh, this is going to be the story of the Battle of Credit and with with Gary Gygax. But it very much isn't. Right. Gary Gygax does not appear very much in this documentary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I thought, I wonder if that's going to be... Not, I guess disappointing, but a kind of a bait and switch. Mm. But then I r realized, like watching it, is like it's it's actually introducing the idea of credit. Yes. And yes. then you might think, oh, everybody's giving credit to Gary Gygax, and then people a little bit more in the know go, oh no, there's also Dave Arneson. But this is a story with Twin City Gamers, and it's it again, it's about credit, but it's giving credit to like everybody. Yes. Right. So not only. Of course, David Arneson, but also David Wesley and uh, uh, David McGarry, who made Dungeon. Right. I, before D Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> yes. there was Dungeon. Yes. I, and uh, the other people that were part of the Twin City Gamers. Mm. So I thought that w that was actually a, a smart move. Mm -hmm. And then also you're kind of waiting, when, when's Gary Gygax going to come into this thing? When's Gary Gygax? And then you realize, like, by the time this role-playing torch gets passed to Gary Gygax I mean the torch is already lit mm, yes like he runs with it and him and Dave Arneson create Dungeons and Dragons but the, they hand a pretty substantial concept or a pretty substantial idea for a game to Gygax it wasn't no, like true. hey let's create a new game together so mm -hmm. well, I thought that was really surprising and I thought that they had that initial clip kind of sets that up because mm -hmm. you're kind of waiting and you're like Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's great. but again, that was really unexpected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you watch this documentary. So, no, yeah, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, and and where a lot of contributions came from, yeah. like where certain character classes or races came from. It's yeah. it's very interesting. Just the the players' needs or what they wanted to do in the game is why certain things exist or why certain things were created. And these are the first people to do that. The first people mm -hmm. to play as thieves or paladins or dwarves. Yeah, yeah actually the dwarves is my favorite story. Like mm -hmm. what, how the first dwarf came to be. And you're, you're listening to a real funny end to that story. But yeah. And you watch and it's like not like somebody said like, okay, we've got, we need a thief. <laughs> right. So who wants to be the thief? It's just like somebody sort of playing their character like someone would be like a, ro a little bit roguish, right, a little bit right. light, light fingered. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, that was good. Mm -hmm. uh, another big surprise, and and I think this is really gonna, I don't know, ch change people's minds or, you know, sometimes you know I hear people nowadays when they talk about early Dungeons and Dragons and they say. Uh, it was kind of like these war gamers kind mm. of making a slight extension in the role playing, and it's actually not what you would think. Yes. The very first game session, I, hey, you're playing that really avant garde role playing game, and, <laughs> you know, hey, I'm a big fan of Vampire. And you're thinking, like, oh, I'm, you know, all we do is sit around the table and do political intrigue with the, you know, the Prince of uh, Detroit or Prince of Chicago, and you're like, and you're patting yourself on the back. <laughs> no. That, that, that is not as esoteric or, or unusual as the very first uh, RPG session and the types of characters that were there. And that, that was called uh, Brownstein? Mm -hmm. Brownstein? Right, right. Brown, Frankenstein? <laughs> Brownstein? <laughs> yeah. And that's based on... It, it's, it's actually set in the Napoleonic era. Right. And you think, oh, because they, they were playing soldiers. No, no, no. <laughs> you got to watch the documentary and... And if you can seriously come back and tell me that your RPG sessions <laughs> are 
as mundane? I, I don't know. Mm. You know, somebody described David Duchovny's acting as that he dares to be boring. <laughs> and if somebody were to s- s- explain that, that scenario to me, I was like, oh, that kind of sounds boring. Is that my character? <laughs> yeah, but then they just ran with it. And oh, yeah. the fact that these war gamers would run with a scenario like that, you're just like, mm. wow, that more RPG chops than I have. Yeah. <laughs> right. So so your preconceptions I think um, might be challenged if when you watch this documentary of what early role playing was like. Mm. Yeah. And you made a good point about the uh, the lesson that was learned by the game master in that very first session. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So the fir- first uh, I guess they used the term referee. Mm-hmm. So we use that. The first referee was David Wesley. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was a lesson there. So if you're like, I mean, you get, people who are have already ran a game, they're going to go, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> definitely need to learn that. Unfortunately, it took me six sessions or even three campaigns right. to learn this lesson. <laughs> but it was right there from the beginning. Yes. And David Wesley didn't learn it right away. Mm-hmm. And we all get that. And it deals with like, uh, you know, referee or game master expectations versus player expectations. Like what? makes a fun game Mm -hmm. and then you watch that and like you know when those two coincide or or when they can finally like meet Mm. then you got a really successful game and that was right there from the beginning yeah so yeah absolutely and again that shouldn't surprise me (laughs) but it it did surprise me that hey it was there like there was so much Mm. so you yeah what they were playing i think probably the thing that would be most foreign for us now is that so much of it was in their head. Right, right. Yeah. And people would be surprised despite the fact that these were war gamers you know, who created this game or were playing this game, how combat wasn't even supposed to be a part of the first session. Right. So, yeah. again, you know, like what the game master uh, the game master plans versus what the players are going to end up doing right mm-hmm. there from the first <laughs> session. Yeah. And... <laughs> uh, oh, now there's combat in this. Okay, let's yeah. let's roll with it. Yeah. Right. So, and yeah, David Arneson died in the first session yeah, or right. something like really yeah. early yes, yes. in the game. <laughs> I'd sit right there. I was like, players, like, hey, you shouldn't have done that, but now here's your consequences. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, and I think that was what was so fun about watching the documentary is like, there's so many things I didn't expect. Mm-hmm. And just, oh, okay. You know, I kind of didn't realize that that was the first session. Or, mm. okay, I thought you would have prepared for combat in the first <laughs> session. Okay, no. Yeah, because I think what people kind of get, like, they follow maybe too closely Dungeons and Dragons mm-hmm. evolution. So they know, I know Chainmail was there, uh, which was uh, like war game rules for uh, medieval or fantasy. Right. Uh, games and then from Chainmail they made Dungeons and Dragons and you're like no nah, mm. not exactly mm-hmm. not exactly you have to watch like when Gary Gygax gets involved Chainmail does exist yes but there's something there's a huge other portion that the, I guess we'll call it the Brownstein the Brown Brownstein Brownstein <laughs> <laughs> the Brownstein portion and or the Blackmore portion that gets added to that and so you take your like, you know, the, the narrative gaming people. Mm. I mean, that's probably that right. side, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think that was there from the beginning. Yeah. I don't think that's something that evolved and we kind of grew up <laughs> and then thought, oh, well, g- gaming can be much more. It was actually there from the very first session. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I think it's really important to have a documentary like this because you're still getting the people that were actually there. Mm. I mean, they would have been in the 70s about college age right because i think david wesley was was going to college at the time arneson was a little bit younger than him but so he came back from college and then he he runs this first rpg session Mm -hmm. so people who are college age in the 70s so you really got to you know record and get down what it was like and what happened at the time i don't know if people are familiar with the documentary series world at war but uh, I think it was a BBC production, and Laurence uh, Olivier narrated it. But yeah, they had people that were alive during World War II, either you know 
in combat or on the home front mm -hmm. yeah sharing their stories and it's good to do that for uh role playing and, and this his and get this history so we're not having people you know relating what they've heard about what happened is right. these people are telling their own stories and they're good storytellers i yes. mean i was actually surprised because we had interviewed griff morgan for our podcast while he was uh, while they were working on editing the documentary and we were you know, not terribly good interviewers <laughs> so if you watch or if you watch or you listen to our interview it, it's it's griff speaking we because what ha had happened is we kind of had our questions but this this guy didn't shut up mm -hmm. he just kept talking and telling stories and telling stories and we're which may or may not have matched our questions so <laughs> right. we were we had about three hours of this interview and we were like what do we do because mm -hmm. this guy likes to talk and so we decided okay we'll, we'll, we'll just capture the stories and then that's how we released it in, mm -hmm. in a few parts we released the uh, portions of the interview with just him telling the story not even our questions so we thought wow it's gonna be this documentary should probably be a lot of him talking <laughs> and it's not because it probably the same scenario is he's got people that are more than yeah. willing to talk and really good at explaining um, and telling the story mm -hmm. so we captured that uh, I mean there's uh, Robert Kuntz I think I think I pronounced that correctly and people familiar with Dungeons and Dragons would recognize that name it's been on Greyhound yeah, yeah. okay uh, so he comes from the, the Gary Gygax side I right. believe yeah and he's got a nice analogy of how things go together yeah right yeah and so it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, I, one guy at the end, kind of he's interviewing it all and drops a bomb. Oh, I've never actually played <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Yet. <laughs> okay, but he was there from the beginning. And, mm -hmm. But but then you hear him say that, and it's like that really helps highlight the separation between what they were doing and what becomes Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. or, or I guess it becomes Dungeons and Dragons. But what they were doing versus what is or was Dungeons and Dragons at that time, mm -hmm. and I think. Yeah, that was really good. And we got to see the uh, the opening of the, the last mint copy of uh, Blackmore, of the Blackmore setting by the uh, the Judges Guild. Yeah, yeah. So, so they got the sun. Mm. You go, yeah, it was the sun because he had drawn the maps right, and stuff right, when he was yeah. like a teenager. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but I, as a collector, I was shocked. And, <laughs> and it shows like all of these people were just like not only willing to give their time to tell their stories, but also just sharing stuff. They were... You, they were sharing all that, you know. Here's, you know, the first, you know, character stats and oh right, and yeah, uh, sharing that with uh, the filmmakers. And yeah, and like you said, like he he holds up this thing. It was a, it was in a plastic bag, and it was the it was like a test the, run. Yeah, the, the test run is a plastic that, yeah. bag, yeah, and right. then he it's like, oh, that's you're like, oh, that's really cool mm -hmm. that you've got that, and then he takes out an, <laughs> uh, an exacto knife, cuts it, to open, and I was like, oh my god, why are you doing that? But they realize it's like this is you know we're, we're talking about history mm -hmm. and we, we got to share this history right yeah right. so and he shared <laughs> that and then yeah of course they open it up and you look at what you know an actual physical copy of this uh, this early early role-playing game right. Yeah. right so yeah there's a lot of you really see the generosity of these people that that were you know gave their time or gave gave the, the stuff that they had yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's the documentary itself is, is well done. I mean, nice camera work, uh, nice setup. Uh, Griff, uh, I think Chris Graves, he's the cinematographer. Mm -hmm. Really good editing because they had like so many hours of uh, oh, yeah. footage. And then Griff does a good job of introducing, moving the story along. But they still, you know, had moments of spontaneity mm -hmm. because you have that like maybe. It was like a typewriter, mo uh, talking about this typewriter, this right. really significant typewriter in the history of role playing. And I, it, it seemed like, oh, what, what, oh, you, do you want to see this typewriter? Or something like that must have happened. <laughs> right, right. And he whips out his camera phone or something because it's a completely different camera. But yeah, but, but just capturing that moment. And mm -hmm. then now it's, now we have it. Right. Yeah. Right. And now we have like uh, a little bit more to the story and a little bit more to the contributions of the different people. Mm. Uh and there's there's too many to really name like oh, know, yeah. but it, it's really surprising um like how people contributed to different things yeah. Mm. yeah i think that was the the biggest message from this uh first part is that 
the uh, the contributions. It was a gradual evolution, and there yeah. were contributions by everybody that was involved in playing the game because they all, as as players, they all had their own needs and wants of what the game experience was, and that's what became role playing. Yeah, and I mean, I, I would think I, I hesitate to say a unique situation, but certainly I, I'm not going to say like if people think, oh, well, we would have gotten role playing eventually. They're like, maybe, mm. maybe, but there was a lot of circumstances that needed to be there or a lot of, lot of elements that needed to be there that helped to create that. Now, you know, I, I alluded to it. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what the first role playing session was about, but I can imagine if I was a war gamer showing up for that and like, this is my character. <laughs> Sorry, what am I doing? And it's like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but these people didn't do that. They went, okay, great. Let's run. Let's, let's run with it. Mm-hmm. So to have that, and I, I, Griff uses the, the term, which, w- w- which they didn't apply to stuff like this back in the, that day, but he uses the term incubator mm-hmm. and saying that this was actually what would be described as a, as a role-playing incubator. Right. Uh, but they just didn't have the term for it. But that's what it was. And yeah, it was, you know, if you didn't have certain types of people bringing different strengths in that, then it wouldn't have happened. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we talk about this typewriter. If that person wasn't there, then maybe we don't move on to the next yeah. step. So, no. And then you're also thinking like, oh, you know, now with the internet, it's really helped bring gamers together from a lot of communities. And then you watch. Now people find a way. They oh, just yeah. work with what they have. Right. Like the person working with the old library system oh, to yeah. track down people. Yes. That was, you're like, yeah, I guess you would. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, when he's setting it up, and it's like people were not familiar at the time might not understand this, but I was like, yeah, I remember that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm old enough to remember that, but I wouldn't have thought to do that. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that that was also interesting. I mean, they what, what was it you were mm-hmm. saying? Like the the group that they formed mm-hmm. was like second only into to oh, like military college, yeah, or right, something yeah, like that. Yeah, like the, the size of, the, yeah. of people that were doing these war games, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. And they did it before they could just post stuff online. You know, they're mm-hmm. using magazines, posting like ads on stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Finding gamers. Yeah. Yeah. And they even yeah. made reference to uh, once the they were enjoying the session and wanted to talk about like what was happening with their character. They just got on the phone with Dave Arneson and just continued. Oh, that, that was a good story. Yeah. Like that, that person. <laughs> yeah. They're doing that over the phone. Right, yeah. Yeah, that, so, yeah. The technology of the time. Yeah. And just, you know, imagine doing that. Like, people are like, oh, you know, now we've got uh, Roll20 or, or those other things. Mm-hmm. Was it Fantasy Grounds? Is yeah, another, yeah. Yeah, another popular one. And you're just like, or, or the phone. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, yeah, imagine, like, trying to run a, a game, you know, just a referee <laughs> on, a, on one end and one player at the other end. And you're just like, <laughs> like, you think you're... You're clever now. Mm, yeah, right, right. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine that particular <laughs> game. But imagine being that enthusiastic. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. So yeah. yeah, and I think it was definitely the, you know, the age of the players. A lot of maybe the older, more historical, you know, wargaming strategists that had just kind of dropped out of the group and allowed them to, you know, and and because that maybe the thing that made them drop out was the move to fantasy away from historical. Um, that's yeah. a good story. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. we could spoil that one. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because uh, uh, Dave Arneson was the youngest mm-hmm. at the time, and uh, of course the people that were well versed in history, the necessity to kind of move away from history is you spend most of your time arguing you know what were the actual rifles that these soldiers would have had this didn't exist at the time at this battle this it would have been like this so history exists like history is 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 in the past and we know it and uh, fantasy is the unknown so that kept the the people that were historians or or engineers kind Mm -hmm. of a little bit more off balance and uh, just letting them uh kind of go with the setting and go with the improvisation of the game yeah yeah freed them up yeah right right. freed like everybody at the table up they Mm -hmm. they can just not only did the game master not have to worry or, or the referee at, at the time have to worry about players interjecting with no that that wasn't around at that time mm-hmm. but then the players could just go oh, i want to do this mm-hmm. can i all right let's think of how <laughs> how we do that yeah. right, right. or uh, you know i read this in this this story and let's let's use that mm-hmm. yeah so i hope i hope you know i know we did a lot of teasers uh you know and we didn't like all these surprises we're not telling you the stories but yeah again we want if if after watching this you're interested enough to go pursue uh, the secrets of Blackmore, then 
we, we want you to have the same experience as we did and mm. just go, wow, oh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, and how can they, like, we actually have ordered the uh, right. physical copies. Unfortunately, we didn't, so we watched it online. Yes. Uh, legally. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so uh, there was a, su a successful Kickstarter mm -hmm. that they used to produce the, uh, the Blu-rays and DVDs, which I believe can be pre-ordered. And there's a, a Facebook group for Secrets of Blackmore as well as a, a Twitter Mm -hmm. Twitter account. And if you want to uh, view the movie right now on streaming, it's uh, vimeo.com. Mm -hmm. So just search for Secrets of Blackmore and you can either rent or purchase the uh, HD version of mm -hmm. the movie. And it's a, it's a great experience mm -hmm. uh, watching that. We, uh, uh, it's a you know, very nice quality and very easy to, uh, to navigate. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll put a link in the description to uh, uh, the, the uh, location on Vimeo where you can see Secrets of Blackmore. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we encourage you to take a look. And there's also trailers, uh, on Vimeo as well, if you'd like to get a taste of you know what the interviews are like and and yeah. how how things are put together. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and also the physical top copies, like blue, uh, DVDs and Blu-rays, are coming if they're not available already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have ours ordered, mm -hmm. but we haven't haven't received it yet. So right. that's all going to be available if you if you want that as well so yeah nice yeah so we'll put links to uh our, our interview that we did with uh griff the parts of that as well as location of secrets of blackmore there were facebook and everything yeah. so you can find that and yeah. uh yeah we would encourage you to it was a very uh very great piece of history and a uh, nice to see it's that... a piece of our history yes yeah. <laughs> right. as us as <laughs> any again anybody who's interested in role playing or game mm. design i mean this is your world at war Yes. Yeah. yeah. And support indie filmmaking. So these okay. people spent six years. Yeah, six years. And, you know, their own money and mm -hmm. uh, just a, a very small group of people to document some, something that maybe bigger companies should have been documenting. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. So they did it. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.